Nom Angels is a 1989 action-adventure movie from director Sirio H. Santiago. The movie opens with a Nom Angels logo being set on fire. Better not let Shane see that. This intro song is provided by After Midnight Karaoke. I'd only look out for myself, friend. I never thought about world peace of prosperity. He's trying really hard to hit these notes, but not doing so well. So I'm just do what I got we cut to some soldiers in what I'm assuming is the jungles of Vietnam. I hope this doesn't turn into that scene from Platoon. Lieutenant Calhoun meets with an informant who tells him about enemy guns in the area. They head a little further into the jungle. No birds. No animal sounds. This can only mean one thing. Predator! The soldiers get ambushed by the enemy. Ah, uh, the overpopular grenade launcher that somehow explodes behind the target. The soldiers regroup in an old temple, but are outnumbered. Rep Brown, where are you? They retreat into a cave filled with treasure. They make one last stand, and a local tribe helps them out. Well, that guy won't be singing for Journey. The soldiers try to leave, but the tribe turns on them, too. Apparently, it's Thong Thursday. The lieutenant and Mr. Trin are the only two to get away. They then reenact this memorable scene from Star Wars. Good luck. The evil leader of the tribe is not too happy. When you got a mullet, but you really want a ponytail. Meanwhile, during a monsoon, the lieutenant and Trin are telling the colonel what happened. The raid tribesmen who attacked us swear allegiance to Char. They swear allegiance to a vegetable? Oh, okay, this is charred. The colonel tells them in two weeks' time they're gonna bomb this entire area. The lieutenant asks if he can go on a rescue mission to save his men that Chard took captive. Over at the local discotheque, the lieutenant goes to the bar and hey, it's Fred Bailey! It's just not a proper Santiago film without him around. Well, it seems they bet some other gang that could ride their hogs straight to hell and live to tell about it. How exactly do you drive from California to Vietnam? Just then, a bar brawl breaks out. The Hells Angels fight so well, the lieutenant asks the colonel if he can hire them for the mission to rescue his men. You know what they call themselves, don't you? One percenters. One percenters? He tells them they can be in and out in five days. I guess they didn't officially get the Hells Angels rights. You think you can actually handle four Hells? <laughs> They're tough bastards. The lieutenant cuts a deal with the Hells Blanks that he'll get them out of prison if they help him on his mission. He sweetens the deal by telling them about the gold on Chard's land. Calhoun needs one more guy, a mechanic. So the next day, he goes to find his old friend Hickman. Later that day, they go to pick up the bikers. They're upset the bikes they got for them aren't Harleys. Larger's so upset, he overacts. These are toys! These are not Harleys! They test out the bikes and decide it's okay. The next day, they gear up to fly into enemy territory. Well, this tune isn't exactly Fortunate Son. Now climb across these alien skies. I'd rather be the bad one cause the good guy dies. I feel alone, alone, I don't know when. I've come this way before, my friend. They're under heavy fire, so the helicopters drop them off before they get shot down. The group rides through the jungle on the way to their first stop. They get ambushed, and it sure is a good thing the bad guys are terrible shots. Are bushes good protection against gunfire? The bad guys retreat, and the bikers blow them up. With the bad guys dead, we get some more footage of them riding through the jungle. They stop to rest for the night, and Larger attacks the lieutenant to try to establish dominance. The next day, they run over a landmine. I don't think he's gonna make it. Oh no, not that guy! Alright. <clears throat> we are gathered here to, uh... That's not right. I have known... Benelli, say something! Such a heartfelt speech. They bury Turco and move on. That night they all realize what day it is. It's the 24th, man. So, what's the 24th? It's Thanksgiving. Why is this such a big deal? They just arrived like two days ago. They didn't know it was close to Thanksgiving? They arrive at the meetup place to get gas, but their guy's missing. Seems the enemy took over the base, so the guys go into stealth mode to take him out. They see the bad guys have hostages and... Oh no! Oh, I hope for your sake that's cranberry juice. 
Oh, nerds. The team arrives just in time. Well, except for that one guy. But just in time for everyone else. They free the hostages. Who gives them fuel and ammo? They get to a ravine and decide the thing to do is the dumbest thing. They jump it. I'm thinking this is some forced perspective with the rocks there to conceal the ramp. They find another village that's been wiped out. They meet up with a few survivors who tell them Chard did this. The lieutenant and Hickman go to rescue their friends while the bikers go to get the gold. They get into the cave and run into the tribe. Oh, why me? Chard takes the bikers back to his camp. Meanwhile, the lieutenant was expecting this. That night, they sneak into the base. They set explosives for a full-scale assault at sunrise. Okay, maybe not sunrise. Sometime in the afternoon. Calhoun walks into the base to talk to Chard. Is Chard supposed to be like Colonel Kurtz? The lieutenant wants to make a deal for his men. Precious metal is a sign of leadership to these people. Unless, of course, you are a deity. What? Unless, of course, you are a deity. Chard doesn't want to deal, so Calhoun leaves. Then they blow the place up. Well, this is a bad edit. Hickman saves the soldiers and the bikers. The gang then escapes to the caves. Chard then goes on a leisurely Sunday drive. In the caves, the men take all the gold. Chard calls in for backup. I want them alive! Sacco! Sacco! Lenny! Lenny! Yeah, get him, Lenny! The bikers decide to ditch the gold and help the soldiers. Why is he shooting gangsta style? The bikers arrive to save the day. They get to a bridge and no, oh, no! Looks like they gotta jump another gap. Benelli made the jump, but then gets blown up. Carmody saves Larger, so he goes off to get revenge. The lieutenant and Hickman get captured. Chard shows up, and I guess this means he killed Larger. That's kind of weak, killing a main character off screen. Calhoun then squares off with Chard. They fight it out, and I don't think this ox was part of the choreography. Calhoun gets stabbed in the leg, but manages to lasso Chard and knocks him off the bridge. Aw oh, man, I was hoping he'd get shot so I could call him Swiss Chard. With Chard dead, the tribe leaves. The soldiers aren't giving up, and now they have tanks. Calhoun picks up a zip line to cross the bridge. How did Benelli jump this? Speaking of, it looks like he's still alive. The tanks blow up the bridge, and the survivors get away. And we get a little ending montage. Nam Angels, like most of Santiago's films, was shot in the Philippines. This was an attempt to take two popular exploitation genres, biker exploitation and nom exploitation, and meld them into one. For Chard's army, they hired the locals as extras. Since these films were largely being made for the U.S. market, Santiago's films always had roles that required American actors. He had a roster of expats who were living in the Philippines full-time that would fill out the casts. Many of them had no prior acting experience, so they learned on the job. Most often they were Vietnam vets who couldn't readjust to life in the U.S. after the war, so they chose to move to the Philippines. They often worked in the Peace Corps and got jobs in Filipino movie productions when available. The actors said they preferred to get jobs as extras over larger speaking roles. The payment for a speaking role was more, but they would only work for a few days. Whereas working as an extra, you could be working up to 30 days. It was a lower daily rate, but in the end, you went home with more money in your pocket. They hired Vernon Wells to play the evil warlord Chard. Wells was known to American audiences as Bennett in Commando and Wes in The Road Warrior. He enjoyed his time in the film and came back two years later to shoot another Filipino production, Circle of Fear. Brad Johnson played the lead, Lieutenant Calhoun. Born in Arizona, he got a start doing TV commercials and eventually moved to film. Nom Angels was his first production. He was a dead ringer for actor Tom Berenger, and some speculated that since Berenger was a bigger name at the time, that may have hurt Johnson's career. He worked steadily in both TV and movies, with shows like Melrose Place and Soldier of Fortune, Inc., as well as movies like Flight of the Intruder and the Left Behind trilogy. The actors playing the Hells Angels complained that they were riding Kawasaki's instead of Harley's. The truth was, Harley's, on top of being expensive, cost an ungodly amount of money to ship them from the U.S. to the Philippines. They settled for the bikes they could get and wrote a scene into the film with the gang complaining about it. While there was no shortage of Filipino DOPs available, Santiago hired an American, Chris Squires, to be the DOP on Nom Angels. Squires had been working in the industry as a camera operator since the late 70s and offered Santiago a bargain rate to work in exchange for his first DOP credit. Squires did a terrific job and went on to work on numerous award-winning films like The Usual Suspects, Forrest Gump, and Whiplash. The bar scene was shot in a real bar on the waterfront in Manila. 
When Chard captures the soldiers, he sees their dog tags are taped over. The reason for that had a basis in reality. In Vietnam, the VCs were able to track the GIs by the clinking of their dog tags, so the soldiers taped over them to be quiet. Just goes to show you can learn something, even in a low-budget exploitation film. Nam Angels doesn't disappoint. It's got tons of action and a fairly interesting premise. Johnson was great as the lieutenant, and Wells was as menacing as possible as the evil Chard. I had the pleasure of meeting him a few years ago, and for a guy who almost always plays villains, he was one of the nicest guys I've ever met. The bikers were good in their roles, but mostly they were there to just yell and give Calhoun a hard time. They added the right amount of rebelliousness to the production. Nom Angels is nom exploitation and biker exploitation turned up to 11. Sure, it may not be the most original film out there, but a battle-hardened lieutenant hiring a gang of Hell's Angels to go on a rescue mission in Vietnam is like action movie comfort food. No, I just want to know what this is, because these are not our bikes, man. These are not, not, not our bikes. 